Okay, so I'm gonna replace my water heater. I found out earlier in the week it had been leaking from one of the water lines. Fortunately, I caught it relatively early. This video is specifically for a mobile home water heater. I live in a trailer. This is a 30 gallon electric and uh, I'm gonna make this video as short as possible at the same time trying to explain as best I can. This is gonna be different from a regular gas water heater. And this water heater is specifically for manufactured homes and I'll show you the new water heater. This is in my bedroom closet. This is inside my closet. I wanna show you all my clothing that I never wear anyways. Uh, but yeah, this video is specifically for trailers, so, and 30 gallon electric water heaters. I already, hopefully, drained as much as I could as lazily as possible. Let me give you a quick rundown. If you're unfamiliar and you have no experience uh, doing DIY projects, this, that's the hot outlet. Again, this is specifically for a trailer that is the cold inlet there's the ball valve um, i had to shut off the water to my trailer outside because that ball valve was not working and i want this process to go as smoothly as possible because today's sunday and i work monday through saturday this is my only day off so i just want to get this out of the way i'm gonna do a quick job so it's not the most professional job so this is right here specifically the cpvc line which is the relief pressure relief valve up there which has been tripped i was trying to drain as much as i can that's the drain valve you would connect the water hose a garden hose to that if you wanted to drain it again i'm going to do this as lazily as possible so quick explanation here uh, the, the easiest thing by the way if you're going to replace your own water heater and you don't have any experience I highly recommend you get the new water heater to be as close to the old one as possible if it's exactly the same it's gonna make your life a lot easier so for example I'm just going to cut the CPVC line which is a three-quarter uh, CPVC pipe. I bought the three-quarter coupling for it. So I'm just going to cut the line close to the middle so it's flexible. And then I can just unscrew it from the relief valve. And yeah, put that back together as quickly as possible. I did buy new water lines. It's not a good idea to reuse the existing water lines, uh, these in particular are three quarter, 24 inch long flex lines. I got the exact same ones, braided steel, just because they didn't have the, the flexible copper lines. I went to Home Depot and got everything I needed for this yesterday. So yeah, you gotta shut off the electricity at the, at the circuit for your water heater, obviously. I was kind of touching it. Uh, I'm pretty sure my works. I hope it does. Uh, but yeah, so shut the water outside. I'm attempting to drain as much as I can. Uh, I opened up a faucet here in my bedroom, the master bedroom, which is on one end of the trailer, and then I opened up the faucet in the kitchen as well to the pressure in the lines, and I uns started unscrewing this nut as well from the three-quarter water line to relieve some pressure so yeah i'm gonna get my dolly in here and try and get this old water heater out without draining all, all of the water from there because i just want this to be as simple as possible it's sunday it's my only day off so yeah let's get started okay so i just wanted to take quick little video of the new water heater Ream, I got it from Home Depot as you can see it's meant for a manufactured home electric 30 gallon and the dimensions are the same 
pretty much as my existing water heater which is helpful and uh, yeah so Rheem is a pretty good brand uh, from from my brief plumbing experience I did some plumbing in the past uh, I can tell you that Home Depot is a distributor for Rheem those are pretty good water heaters and uh, Lowe's is a distributor for Whirlpool uh, we used to have some issues with Whirlpool water heaters so I personally would go with Rheem I replaced my aunt's water heater a few years ago and uh, I went to Home Depot as well because it was close by to her house but also because I know that Rheem is pretty good so yeah Rheem 30 gallon electric water heater and this is what we're going to be installing today and just a little quick video of the tools you're gonna need for the most part I got some ads laid out so I don't get my carpet too dirty um, but yeah some adjustable crescent wrenches a screwdriver uh, for the the screws on the electrical power source um, some thread sealant don't know if the audio is picking this up some dogs outside are howling uh, I live in a trailer park my neighbors are very close by so some thread sealant um, I got an old one here but I have a newer one too some thread sealant for the threads when you apply your water lines some Teflon tape helps create a better seal uh, measuring tape comes in handy if you need to get the dimensions and if you don't have a lot of space uh, it's a good idea to take measurements and see if it's going to be difficult to get the old water heater out and get the new water heater in for example I have some channel lock pliers there <coughs> pardon me channel locks for uh, the CPVC glue this one in particular let me see if my camera will focus uh, I don't think it's focusing but it says you don't need um, primer for it I can't get into focus I'm looking at the camera I'm looking at the can so but you don't need primer for this and that's just for the relief line as well there really won't be any water passing through there this is the CPVC coupling uh, CPVC is I believe specifically for for high temperatures for hot water I have some uh, some wire brushes to clean the threads on the copper fittings so that I can apply the the Teflon and the uh, what is that again the thread sealant. Uh, it's kind of early. It's a Sunday morning. I'm tired. Some tube cutters, pipe cutters uh, for the CPVC. I bought a new one just in case I'm gonna need it. Uh, this one's pretty cool. Rigid it says lifetime warranty, so I bought it. Uh, you can't. My camera doesn't pick that up, but I got a little cheapy pair here for the again for the CPVC. I am very fortunate. I don't have to do any soldering uh, for the most part. Everything is just water lines for me. If you have to do any soldering, that's a completely separate video and if you don't have any experience with that I suggest you learn as much as you can or maybe look into hiring someone to do it for you because there's a lot of money that would be involved with buying everything that you need to solder but that's a completely separate video and a bucket would come in handy if you start getting messy a dolly as well obviously I'm doing this by myself so if you're doing this by yourself a dolly would help um, maybe some tarps if you want to lie them down depending on how far you have to go my old water heater is not too bad so hopefully I won't make a mess going down my hallway but yeah I'm gonna try and get the old one out now I can't really record too much because like I said I'm just doing this by myself but I'll give you guys the the basics as I go along all right so I was in the process of disconnecting the power source and uh, 
I didn't die, fortunately. I think my breakers work. At least I haven't died yet. I didn't get the wire nuts off yet. But uh, I'm out of practice and I didn't do uh, very many electric water heaters in the past. So I just wanted to give a little tip that I'm going to do myself here. And also a little magnetic bowl for your screws might be helpful if you have one. Uh, those are very small screws. So I'm going to take a picture of this just so... I mean, it's simple enough, but you know, green goes with the green screw there and ground and I'm not sure which one's hot, but black with black, red with red, and here's an additional ground screw, exposed copper tubing, and uh, yeah, I'm not dying. Okay, so yeah, I think the breakers work. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take a picture of that just in case, just in case I need that little refresher that little reminder so just a little piece of advice if anybody actually watches this video probably not so as usual things never go smoothly or the way i planned so i had to use a little bit of ingenuity here i don't know how well this can get picked up by the camera but Hope these videos come out all right. I'm using my little microphone. I thought, and for some reason, like I said, I I didn't do very many electric water heaters in the past. I thought it'd be pretty easy to get this out of here without draining it completely, but yeah, that's not the case. Seeing as how there's uh, the cold inlet there, which also acts as an outlet, so I was going to see if I had maybe a plug or a cap or something try and cap the water line but no and uh, yeah when I tripped the relief earlier I could hear water coming out but obviously the water sits at the bottom of the tank so I got one of the old flex lines and I hope this is a good picture connected the flex line to the drain valve and uh, my little compartment area here had a little hole there anyways so I just made that hole a little bit bigger with my drill there I made the whole driller I made the hole bigger with my driller and uh, yeah I showed that that line in there so it's currently draining and I'm just waiting for that and uh, since and I had the idea earlier too and I'm just gonna go ahead and go with it now with the new water heater I'm going to connect I have a an old garden hose outside so I'm gonna connect that hose to the drain valve on the new one shove that through that hole and I was also reading the manual on the new water heater, which is a good idea. And and I knew this from the past as well, but it kind of reminded me that preventative maintenance with your water heater is a good idea. So it's also a good idea to drain it periodically from time to time. So now that I'm going to have a, a hose hooked up and it's just going to go straight down, in the hole of my trailer, underneath my trailer, so I can drain it periodically from time to time. Got about 15 years out of this water heater. This was a GE. I don't even know if they still make water heaters, but this water heater did very well for me, and uh, and I wasn't even here for the past 15 years. I bought this trailer from my aunt, so uh, yeah, this water heater worked out, and it might even still be good, but like I said, the water line was leaking on me and I just decided to replace it anyhow. It's still draining. But yeah, now I have an idea to drain the new water heater and hopefully I'll have way more than 15 years with the new one. But yeah, just gotta wait for this to drain now. So what better way to pass the time? But yeah, so far, so good. I didn't die with the electrical 
aspect here with the wires. Uh, so, yeah, just gonna wait for it to drain a bit more. Get the old one out. Get the new one in, and hopefully the new installation process won't take nearly as long as trying to get the old one out. All right. Okay. So the entire day later, I finally got it done. Long story short, um, it turns out that whoever did the work before, I don't know who it was, but they actually put the shutoff valve on the wrong side. They put it on the hot side instead of on the cold side. And that is the hot outlet up there, technically. And this is the cold inlet, technically, uh, as far as the water heater is concerned. But as far as my previous plumbing is concerned, they put the shutoff valve on the wrong end, which explains why I had to go outside to shut off the water. I thought the ball valve wasn't working properly. Turns out they just put it on the wrong line. It should be on the cold inlet. They put it on the hot outlet. So anyways, I had to go back to Home Depot, which ended up working out for me because I got the copper flex lines that I originally wanted. Those braided steel lines are pretty rigid. And if you don't have a lot of room to work with, they could be hard to bend. And my copper line back there uh, fortunately has some flexibility but I had to put a new three-quarter ball valve um, the threaded type not the type that you sweat and they didn't have a three-quarter closed nipple they had three-quarter by three I believe that was the only one they had so I did not anticipate when I purchased these items that they would add an additional five inches so my new flex line didn't really reach very well and I didn't want to bend it too much so long story short I had to put some bricks under there and a little bit of wood as well and there's the uh, the water hose I didn't end up connecting it because I might end up using one of those old flex lines in, in the future if and when I drain this water heater and there's the coupling that was the easiest part of this install everything else was a pain I got the wires back in there and uh, at the end of the day once I turn the breakers back on uh, it, it takes a while I thought with it being electric, nothing really has to heat up, but I was trying the faucet in my bathroom, which is not too far from this water heater. Keep in mind, by the way, the distance will affect uh, how fast the hot water gets to that faucet. If you think you need to increase the temperature, uh, keep in mind where the distance is of that particular faucet. So, long story short, I was adjusting the thermostats under those panels and uh, it just needed to run more water. I turned on the shower to see if it just needs to be more water. It took about five minutes and I finally got some hot water going. So I actually increased the thermostats a little bit more than I wanted to at the end of the day but it felt pretty good. It's pretty hot so I'll take it. It's the beginning of winter. It's a it's, uh, it's a good idea, by the way, to date uh, your water heater when you install it so you know when you did so. And uh, as far as the manual is concerned, I have that. It recommends you write down the serial number, the model number, and I actually wrote the date as well when they installed it because it's back there and I can't see it no more. So I wrote that, not when they installed it, but when they manufactured it. I wrote all that on the manual, so I'll always have access to that should I have any issues. This Ream water heater comes with a six year warranty. They tried to upsell me an additional five years at Home Depot 
for I think it was like 70 bucks um, most water heaters are gonna last you longer than that anyways so I declined that because my last water heater lasted me 15 years so another 70 bucks for an additional five years and what if it gives out six years afterwards so 70 bucks for nothing and uh, but yeah these water lines by the way are a little more expensive than the braided steel lines but they're well worth it those braided steel lines are very rigid and they're not very easy to bend and it might cause you issues if if you don't have the space to work with and they don't want to bend and they're gonna cause too much play with your existing incoming water lines so anyhow yeah I wanted to keep this video as short as possible but there you go my new water heater gives me hot water which I'm, I'm happy about uh, it's not the prettiest looking install but again this is inside my closet so it's not a big deal uh, but yeah there you go just wanted to keep this video as short as possible but it's probably too long and it's not very visually detailed but it took the whole day my only day off it's a Sunday it is what it is I got it done two trips to Home Depot over the course of two days but it is what it is I have hot water now don't know if you can hear that background noise I'm doing laundry as well now that I got the water back onto my trailer so if you'd be so kind uh, subscribe to my channel check out my other videos if you have uh, the same issues that I have and you need time to kill you can watch my other videos while you're waiting for your water heater to drain uh, they don't involve DIY projects they don't they just involve me pardon me I had a few beers had a few beers over the course of this day of course it took quite a while to get this project done but if you want to see me being weird in the desert, uh, check out my other videos if you're curious, if you don't know what I'm talking about. And, uh, yeah, I was going to mention, and, and I just remembered to do so, if you don't know what to do with your old water heater, um, consider taking it to a metal recycler if you have one near you. You're not going to get a lot of money for it, but if you can't get rid of it by any other means, at least you'll get a little bit of money for it and uh, by the way copper and brass are more valuable than basic scrap metal so remove this from your old water heater um, that's brass so you might get a little bit more money for it they give it to you by the weight uh, so if you have any scrap metal if you're weird like me fortunately being the weird person that I am and being the the pack rat that I am I'm distracted by the sound of my washer uh, which I installed by the way as well my washer and my dryer so if you're a DIY kind of guy you want to save money do stuff for yourself it's gonna help you out at the end of the day and fortunately I have those bricks there and that little piece of wood which gave me about six inches at the end of the day that's what she said so uh, yeah but there you go so check out my other videos if you want to see how weird I am subscribe to my channel if you'd be so kind I promise you I won't bombard you with notifications I hardly ever post videos only reason I made this one is because I was like well, why not so there you go how to install an, an electric water heater in your trailer in the closet of your bedroom if you're anything like me that's how my trailer set up so there you go hope this video helped you out um, if not I apologize but I definitely recommend you check out as many videos as possible learn as much as you can so that you feel as comfortable and as confident as possible before you tackle this project and just be careful especially with the electricity just make sure your breaker works and uh, yeah so there you go I got hot water now I'm happy I've been going on way too long but yeah hopefully this video helped you out and good luck with your water heater until next time